Hello everyone. Today we are going to review can and able to for ability. So can and able to, which both express ability. We will also review the present continuous tense. Finally, we will learn some new ing nouns, also called gerunds. So these are nouns that end in ing. But first, let's review or let's learn some new vocabulary. Please take a look at your screen. A carpenter is a person who builds houses. He also builds chairs, desks, tables, and beds. A carpenter uses a hammer, nails, a saw, screws, and a screwdriver. Now a plumber is a person who fixes problems in the kitchen and the bathroom. He can fix a leaky faucet. He can fix a leaky drain. Next picture. An electrician is a person who works with electricity. Next picture. A veterinarian is a doctor who helps animals. And a janitor is a person who cleans rooms and buildings. A janitor uses a mop, a bucket, and a broom. Next picture. A trainer is a person who works in a gym. She or he shows people how to exercise. Next example. A seamstress is a woman who sews or alters clothes. She uses a needle and thread. She may use a sewing machine. Now let's begin with can for ability. Take a look at some more examples. A carpenter can build a house. A pilot can fly a plane. A farmer can take care of cows and sheep. A teacher can help students. So can expresses ability in the present and the future. The negative of can is can't, cannot, or can not. These are all negative expressions of can. Okay, let's look at some more examples. Larry isn't a truck driver. He can't drive a truck. Paul isn't a doctor. He cannot help his ill mother. I am not a farmer. I cannot milk a cow. Okay, now let's practice. Sylvia, what is your father's job? My father works, uh, my father works for the city. Uh, he can drive a big truck and he fixes the streets and the sidewalks. Very good. Alberto, what is your father's job? My dad is retired. He can't work. He has a bad back. He has a bad arm. Oh, I'm sorry. Linda, what is your mother's job? She's a housewife. She can cook very well. Her Spanish rice is wonderful. Good. All right. Thank you, everyone. Now it's time to look and listen. Look and listen. A veterinarian can help sick animals. A nurse can help a doctor. A taxi driver can drive a taxi. That pilot can't fly large airplanes. Read and repeat.
past form of can is could. So we use could, and this is the past tense of can. The negative past form of could is couldn't. Okay, let's look at some more examples. The carpenter could build a doghouse when he was younger. The fireman couldn't save the house. The janitor couldn't clean the rooms. The plumber could work 10 hours a day when he was 30. All right, now we know can, and we also know past tense, could and couldn't. So let's practice. Let's review could for ability. Alberto, when your grandfather was young, what could he do? Mm, he was a plumber. He could fix sinks and showers. Oh, great. Sylvia, what could your grandmother do when she was young? She was a seamstress. She could sew. She could make beautiful clothes for my mother. Very good. Linda, what was your grandfather's job? He was a farmer. He could grow wheat and corn. He couldn't grow tomatoes and cucumber. The weather was too rainy. Oh, okay. That's great, everyone. Thank you. Now it's time to look and listen. Look and listen. The fireman couldn't stop the fire. The actor couldn't learn his lines. When he was 25, the carpenter could build two sofas in one day. The doctor could look at 30 patients a day last year. Read and repeat. Now let's review able to. Here are some examples. Carpenters are able to make desks and tables. A seamstress is able to make dresses. An athlete is able to play a sport professionally. Actors are able to perform in front of an audience. The negative of able to is isn't or aren't able to. This is negative. Here are some more examples. A truck driver isn't able to fly an airplane. The doctors aren't able to drive a taxi. Now we're ready to practice. Linda, is a pilot able to help a doctor in a hospital? I don't think so. A pilot isn't able to help a doctor in the hospital. I agree, you're right. A pilot is able to fly an airplane. Alberto, is a nurse able to build a house? Mm, I don't think so. A nurse is not able to build a house. Very good. Sylvia, is a doctor able to help a sick horse? That's a good question. I think a doctor is able to help a sick horse. Yes, I think you're right. Okay, now notice that the past forms of is and are able to are was or were able to. This is the past form in the positive. And the negative past forms are wasn't or weren't able to. 
past form in the negative. The past forms of is and are able to is was and were able to. The past forms of isn't and aren't able to is wasn't and weren't able to. Okay, now let's practice the past forms of able to. Alberto, was your father able to <laughs> fix a leaky faucet when he was younger? Yes, he was able to fix a uh, leaky faucet. He cooked everything. We didn't have to call a plumber. Oh, that's good. Sylvia, were you able to drive a truck when you were 15? Of course not. I wasn't able to drive a truck. I wasn't a truck driver. Okay, I'm sure you weren't. Linda, were your grandparents able to build their own house when they were your age? Yes, they were able to build their house. They still live in the same house. All right, great. Thank you, everyone. Now we're able to look and listen. Look and listen. The pilot was able to fly for 26 hours. The zookeeper wasn't able to find the escaped monkey. A doctor is able to treat sick people. The nurses weren't able to find the chart. Read and repeat. Occupations, present continuous. The last thing we will review is present continuous. Remember, the present continuous talks about actions in progress now and the continuous nature of actions. Let's look at some examples. The plumber is fixing the sink. The actor is practicing his lines. The veterinarian is looking at the sick cat. The manager is having a meeting. We use the present continuous for actions and happenings. These actions are happening around the time of speaking. The action is not finished. Now the form of the present continuous is or are plus your verb, plus ing. Now let's practice. Sylvia, what am I doing right now? You are teaching. You are a teacher. You are teaching your students. Very good. Linda, what is your mother doing now? She's probably cooking. Maybe she is cleaning. She's a housewife. Very good. Alberto, what is your father doing now? He's sleeping. He works at night. He sleeps during the day. Okay, good job, everyone. Now let's look at some pictures. Alberto, what is the policeman doing? He's standing in the street. Um, he is playing with the city. I think he is very angry. Oh, he doesn't look happy, does he? Linda, what is the taxi driver doing? He is sitting in his taxi and he is smiling. Okay, very good. Sylvia, what is the woman with the yellow hat doing? Uh, she is talking to the ticket seller. She's buying a ticket. Great, thank you. Now we can use the present continuous in the negative form. Take a look at some examples. The dancer isn't resting. The policemen aren't working today. The pilot isn't piloting that plane. The teacher isn't using the book. The negative form of the present continuous is isn't or aren't plus your simple verb form plus ing. 
Now let's practice the negative forms of the present continuous. Let's look at another picture. Sylvia, is the bus driver sleeping? No, the bus driver isn't sleeping. She's driving the bus. She's doing her job. All right, you're right. Good. Alberto, is the woman in the fish market buying some fish? Yes, I think so. Uh, she is buying some fish in the fish market. At the same time, she's talking to the fisherman. Okay. Linda, are the firemen sitting at a cafe? Um, they're using water hose for the fire, and I think they're having a hard time. Okay, yes, they're using a water hose, and they're having a hard time. All right, good job, everyone. Now we are looking and listening. Look and listen. The veterinarian isn't going to the restaurant today. The pilots aren't working at the airport today. She isn't eating with the doctor, is she? The policemen aren't wearing their uniforms today. Read and repeat. Now, there are some verbs which are not normally used in the present continuous. These verbs are non-action verbs or state verbs. Take a look at these examples. All right, the verbs we don't normally use in the present continuous are to like, to love, to hate, to want, to need, to prefer, to know, to understand, to believe, to remember, and to seem. So you cannot say, for example, it is seeming. No, we don't say that. And you cannot say, I am knowing. No, that's wrong also. And you cannot say, they are needing. That's wrong too. So these verbs express emotion or thought. They're non-action verbs. So they're not normally used in the present continuous form. There are many other examples of these verbs, but now it's time to look and listen. Look and listen. I hate garlic, so please don't put it in the sauce. Our cook likes spaghetti with lots of garlic in the sauce. You seem tired today. You look tired today. You sound tired today. Read and repeat. Occupations. Gerund. Now we are going to study gerunds. The first thing we will learn is verb plus a gerund, which is the ing form of a verb. Let's look at some examples. The carpenter finished working at his shop. 
the doctor started talking to his patients. It stopped raining so the painter could work outside. The policeman enjoys drinking coffee. So the gerund is an ing form of the verb, and it's used as a noun. There is a gerund in each of these sentences. Take a look. The carpenter finished working at his shop. So in this sentence, working is a gerund. It is the object of the verb finished. Okay, next example. The doctor started talking to his patients. Now in this sentence, talking is a gerund. And it is the object of the verb started. Okay, next example. It stopped raining. So, the painter could work outside. Okay, in this example, raining is the gerund, the object of the verb stopped. Next example, the policeman enjoys drinking coffee. Okay, now this in this example, drinking is the gerund, the object of the verb enjoys. Gerunds can also be used with negative sentences. Let's look at some examples. The carpenter didn't finish working at his shop. The doctor didn't start talking to his patients. It didn't stop raining, so the painter couldn't work outside. The policeman doesn't enjoy drinking coffee. All right, now we're ready to practice gerunds. Linda, what does an electrician enjoy? An electrician enjoys working with electricity. He enjoys using tools. Great. And what are the gerunds in those sentences, Linda? Working and using our gerunds. Okay, very good. Sylvia, when does your father finish work? He finishes working at 6 a.m. He enjoys eating breakfast when he gets home. All right, and what are the gerunds in those sentences? Working and eating are the gerunds. Very good. Alberto, what does a policeman hate? Policeman hates arresting people. Policeman hates shooting guns. Very good. And what are the gerunds? Mm, shooting and arresting are gerunds. Very good. Thank you, everyone. Now we'll enjoy looking and listening. Look and listen. Fishermen enjoy catching fish. The hairdresser finished cutting the hair. It stopped snowing so the teachers could go to work. The actress quit smoking. Read and repeat. Gerunds can also be used as subjects. Take a look at some examples. Building is enjoyable for carpenters. Smoking is bad for doctors and nurses. Running is important for athletes. Practicing the guitar is fun for musicians. So a gerund can be the subject of a sentence. The verb is singular because the gerund is singular. In these sentences, building, smoking, running, and practicing are gerunds. 
Now let's try using gerunds as subjects. Linda, what is important for carpenters? Um, working with tools is important for a carpenter. Excellent. Alberto, what is important for salespeople? Talking with customers is very important. Mm, the customers must uh, trust you. Yes, that's right. Good. Sylvia, what is important for a doctor? Um, having good hands is very important, and having good eyes is very important, too. Good job. Thank you, everyone. Now it's time to start looking and listening. Look and listen. Writing well is important for authors. Riding horses is hard work for jockeys. Learning about languages is necessary for language teachers. Cooking is only enjoyable in a big kitchen for professional chefs. Read and repeat. The last use we are going to discuss is when a gerund follows a preposition. Let's look at some examples. The plumber is good at fixing sinks. The actor is excited about acting in the new film. Ken thanked the electrician for changing his light. The author is interested in writing a new book. A preposition is followed by a gerund, but not by an infinitive. In these sentences, fixing, acting, changing, and writing are gerunds. Some expressions with prepositions followed by gerunds are, take a look, be afraid of, be excited about, Feel like, be good at, be interested in, thank someone for, be tired of. Now let's use gerunds after prepositions. Linda, you tell us three sentences about hairdressers using gerunds after prepositions. Sylvia, you tell us three sentences about teachers. And Alberto, you tell us three sentences about janitors. Okay? Okay. okay? okay. All right, Linda, what are your three sentences? Okay, a hairdresser is good at cutting hair. The hairdresser is interested in learning new styles. The hairdresser uh, thanked the woman for coming. All right, very good. Sylvia, what are your sentences? Um, teachers are interested in learning new things. Teachers uh, usually feel like teaching. Uh, teachers sometimes are tired of teaching. Good. Alberto, <laughs> last but not least. Okay. Um, janitors are interested in uh, cleaning quickly. Janitors don't feel like um, cleaning at home. Uh, janitors uh, aren't afraid of seeing um, cockroaches and uh, some insects. Mice and cockroaches. Yeah. <laughs> okay, those were excellent sentences, everyone. Now we're becoming good at looking and listening. Look and listen. Zookeepers aren't afraid of feeding wild animals. The hairdresser was excited about reading her new magazine. The fireman felt like sleeping after the fire. Nurses are good at caring for ill people. 
read and repeat. Review. Okay, now let's practice all of the gerunds we have learned today. Alberto, what is your grandfather good at? Um, he was a carpenter. He's good at the building furniture. Good. Sylvia, can you smoke in a hospital in Bosnia? Smoking is not allowed in hospitals. It is bad for the doctors and patients. Great. Linda, what does your mother enjoy doing? My mother enjoys cooking. She enjoys shopping. She's a housewife, but she doesn't enjoy cleaning. Good. Thank you all very much. Now, let's do some exercises. So, first, you're going to fill in the blanks with can, can't, could, or couldn't. Okay, Sylvia, the first one's for you. The woman mm -hmm. go to work yesterday. She was ill. Sylvia. The woman couldn't go to work yesterday. She was ill. Very good. The woman couldn't go to work yesterday. She was ill. All right. This man, next example. Mm hmm Give you an injection. He's a nurse. How about for Alberto? This man can give you an injection. He's a nurse. Good. This man can give you an injection. He's a nurse. All right, Linda. We mm -hmm. go to the manager's office. He is there today. What do you think, Linda? Um, we can go to the manager's office. He is there today. Yes. We can go to the manager's office. He is there today. Very good. Thank you, everyone. Now, this time, we'll use able to or isn't or aren't able to. All right, Sylvia, this one's for you. A janitor mm -hmm. fly an airplane. A janitor isn't able to fly an airplane. Okay, good. A janitor isn't able to fly an airplane. Okay, Linda. A carpenter mm -hmm. use a hammer and screwdriver. Linda. This is easy. A carpenter is able to use a hammer and screwdriver. Yes. A carpenter is able to use a hammer and screwdriver. Good. All right, Alberto. A trainer. Mm hmm. Help people on a diet. A trainer is able to help people on a diet. Yes. A trainer is able to help people on a diet. Very good. Now, let's do an exercise using gerunds. Okay, first I will give Sylvia a sentence and she will fill in the blank with the gerund. And then Sylvia, you will give Linda a sentence and Linda, you can give Alberto a sentence. Does everyone understand? Yes. yes did you? <laughs> okay, good. Sylvia, here is your sentence. Mm -hmm. 
a chair, and sofa is very enjoyable for a carpenter. Sylvia. That's simple. Building a chair and sofa is very enjoyable for a carpenter. All right. Building a chair and sofa is very enjoyable for a carpenter. Linda, here is your sentence. An author is always happy when he finishes a new book. An author is always happy when he finishes writing a new book. Yes, an author is always happy when he finishes writing a new book. Good. Now, you give Alberto a sentence. Okay. Here you go, Alberto. An elect electrician is good at mm -hmm. lights. An electrician is good at fixing lights. All right, good. An electrician is good at fixing lights. Great, thank you, everyone. Let's finish with one more exercise using gerunds. I will give each of you two sentences. And you fill in the blanks with gerunds. Does everyone understand? Yes. Are you sure? Yes, of course. <laughs> OK, Linda, here are your two sentences. A doctor enjoys, mm-hmm, a doctor doesn't enjoy, Mm -hmm. A doctor enjoys reading medical books. A doctor doesn't enjoy helping rude patients. A doctor enjoys reading medical books. But a doctor doesn't enjoy helping rude patients. Good sentences, Linda. Alberto, these are for you. Veterinarians love what? And veterinarians hate what, Alberto? Veterinarians love uh, making animals happy. Mm -hmm. Next, Veterin veterinarians hate seeing cats and dogs living on the street. Okay, so first, Alberto to told us, veterinarians love making animals happy. And veterinarians hate seeing cats and dogs living on the street. Okay, Sylvia, it's your turn. A hairdresser likes, mm -hmm, and a hairdresser doesn't like, what? A hairdresser likes talking to customers. A hairdresser doesn't like smoking in her saloon. First, a hairdresser likes talking to customers. A hairdresser doesn't like smoking in her salon. Thank you, everyone. Those were wonderful. All right, now it's time for listening and writing. Listen and write. Listen and write the sentences. The policeman can direct traffic. She couldn't stop the teacher from shouting at her brother. The poet was able to write three new poems. The manager was talking to a customer. Jack is exercising with his trainer. Cutting hair is a hairdresser's job. The taxi driver finished reading his newspaper. The pilot stopped chatting with the stewardess. Bus drivers are good at driving in traffic. Nurses are interested in helping doctors. Now check your work. The policeman can direct traffic. She couldn't stop the teacher from shouting at her brother. The poet was able to write three new poems. 
The manager was talking to a customer. Jack is exercising with his trainer. Cutting hair is a hairdresser's job. The taxi driver finished reading his newspaper. The pilot stopped chatting with the stewardess. Bus drivers are good at driving in traffic. Nurses are interested in helping doctors. Now read the story and answer the questions about it. Read and answer. Ken and June have four children. Their children have very good jobs. Their oldest child, Luke, is a doctor. He is able to help patients with cancer. He is also a pilot. Flying an airplane is very enjoyable for him. Jean is a pediatrician. She can help babies when they are ill. She is writing a new book on baby care. She is also very good at cooking. Tom is a lawyer. He is working at a new office. Helping people with legal problems is what he likes to do. He is also interested in writing poetry. Barb is a teacher. She teaches languages. She is learning Russian. She can speak five languages. She loves going to concerts. She always feels like going to one. Ken and June are very proud of their children. They hope their grandchildren turn out as well as their own children did. Now listen and answer the questions. How many children do Ken and June have? What is Luke's job? What does Luke enjoy doing? How many daughters do Ken and June have? What is the subject of the book Jean is writing? Where is Tom working? What is Tom interested in? What does Barb teach? How many languages does Barb speak? What do Ken and June hope? Now check your answers. How many children do Ken and June have? Ken and June have four children. What is Luke's job? Luke is a doctor. What does Luke enjoy doing? Flying an airplane is enjoyable for Luke. How many daughters do Ken and June have? They have two daughters. What is the subject of the book Jean is writing? The subject is baby care. Where is Tom working? Tom is working in a new office. What is Tom interested in? Tom is interested in writing poetry. What does Barb teach? Barb teaches languages. How many languages does Barb speak? Barb speaks five languages. What do Ken and June hope? Ken and June hope they have good grandchildren. Okay, good job today. See you. Bye-bye. Practicing English. Hey you guys, I have some really great news about the part-time job I applied for. As you know, I'm really interested in computers. I also like teaching English, but computers are different. If they offered me full-time work, I would leave my current job. What is going on with that? Tell us. Well, it looks as if I will have an interview this Friday. I'm really excited to meet with the human resources person. Her name is Valerie, and I will talk to her at 3 p.m. this Friday. Wow, Sam. 
That's great. I hope you do well in the interview, and they give you the job right there. Well, I'm pretty good with computers, so I hope whatever they have me do, I'll get the chance to show the skills I have with technology. I can program computers, I can answer questions from users, maybe even work with customers. There are many skills I have that can be used. Well, Sam, good luck on Friday. Yep. Sorry, guys. I am late. Is Sam getting a part-time job someplace? Angie, come on. It's not like you to miss a good story. Yes, Sam has an interview for a new job at a friend's company on Friday. He was talking about the abilities he has working with computers. Sam is a great person to work with. He has great skills in technology and helped me install my computer last month. I enjoy working on all kinds of jobs with computers, even putting them together. Well, good luck on your job interview. Thanks. I'll let you know how I do. Hey, Carrie, how are you doing? Fine. I came to see Angie. We're going shopping together after she finishes work. What are you doing? I'm going to my job interview. Are you going to wear those clothes? Yeah. What's the problem? You should wear something a bit more formal. Really? Uh, like what? Change into a suit. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Thanks. See ya. See Bye. Ya. Hello. Ms. Walters, your 3 p.m. interview is here. Great, Sally. Tell him I'll be with him in just one moment. I will tell him you will be available in a moment. Thank you. She's waiting for you now. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hello, Sam. Hello. Sit down. I have some questions to ask you. Tell me about your computer skills. Well, there are many things I can do with computers. I like programming them. Uh, I enjoy helping people to learn about how to use computers. I can use a spreadsheet for financial reporting. And I've done a little bit of software writing. Wow, that's impressive. Well, I like working with computers very much. What else can you do with technology? Well, my friends say that I'm very good at stalling and setting up computers. Well, this job is mostly helping computer users at our help desk. Well, my friends say that I have a lot of patience and that I can help them do everything from take the computer out of the box to getting them on the internet. Well, Sam, you're still working for an English teaching company at this time. Can you work a few hours after this job and on Saturdays? Yes, I think the experience that I would get here would be great. Now, this is part-time work. We will be paying you $30 an hour, but you should know that if you do well, we would consider hiring you in the summer and you would be paid more. That sounds great. I'm trying to decide whether I should go to a course for computers or not. Well, your skills are impressive and perhaps working here will help you decide. Well, I want to know all kinds of applications now. So this job can help me understand how technology is used in business. Okay. Can you start this Saturday? The hours are noon to 6 p.m. Yes, I can be here. I think you will like it here, and we're glad to have you on our technology and support team. I'm very glad, too. Thank you. We'll see you on Saturday. Come here around 11.30, and we'll do the paperwork. Okay. See you then. Thank you. Thank you.